In this video, we'll be looking at the math behind code breaking. Here's the situation. Your home planet is being attacked by two hostile planets. This has been going on for a really long time, and you're not sure how much more of this you can take before your planet is destroyed. You do have one thing going for you. You know these planets send messages back and forth every day, and you figured out how to intercept these messages. The problem is, when you open it up, it looks like a big encrypted wall of text, and you have no idea how to decipher it. After consulting your planetary history books, you figure out these planets like to use Caesar ciphers. This kind of cipher relies on a numeric key, let's say 2. So when you take a message, it shifts every single letter in that message forward by that key. So A becomes C, T becomes V, and so on, until you have an encrypted message, which captures your previous message. But unfortunately, you have no idea what the key is. You quickly realize, since there's only 26 letters in the alphabet, you can take an encrypted message, shift it back by 1, see if that solves it, shift it back by 2, see if that solves it, and just keep going. Shift it back by 25, see if that solves it, shift it back by 26, see if that solves it. Now this definitely will work, but it has a huge drawback. Think about this. Take the fact that these are really long messages, with the fact that you have to do about 13 or 26 over 2 shifts per message, and word checking for each of those, and that adds up to a lot of wasted time. This is time you don't really have, especially when you think about the fact that there's millions of messages going between planets every single day. So back to the drawing board it seems. But then you think about something. You start thinking about the distribution of letters in the English language. They're not all the same, are they? Surely A has a certain frequency. E is probably higher. I mean, there's four of them alone in this page. And surely things like Q and Z are even lower than that. All this implies some kind of distribution, which we don't know. But if we did know, we can take it and we can shift it over by some value. And that just gives us a shifted distribution. Now, why is that useful? Well, if we have our master distribution of relative frequencies of letters in the English language, and we have our encrypted text distribution of letters, we can start matching up point to point these distributions, which can tell us the exact key that was used to generate the encrypted message. Now, how are we going to generate this master distribution? Well, we're going to take a diverse set of documents from the English language. For this application, we chose the Declaration of Independence, the Wikipedia article on bullfrogs, the entire script of Interstellar, the IKEA Terms and Conditions Manual, and the Wikipedia article on thunderstorms. We take the frequency of letters from all those documents, average them, and form our master distribution. Let's compare our two methods. Before we had an encrypted document, and we just tried every single shift from 1 through 26. Now we're smarter. We still have the same encrypted document, but we're going to take the frequency of letters in that document, compare it with the master distribution, and generate the exact key that was used in that distribution. Let's look at this in practice. We'll begin by generating our encrypted document. Let's look at it right now. So the encrypted document we can see up here is called encrypted.txt, and it's really unintelligible. We can't figure out what's going on here. We have no idea what this document is even talking about. And we can see it goes on for a really long time. Now let's try to decrypt this document. We can see the program suggests a shift of 12. Let's see if that's meaningful. We can see here in red the master distribution, and we can see above in blue the encoded text distribution. Does 12 seem like a good shift? Well, we see the spike at E in the master distribution is the highest, and the spike at Q in the encoded distribution is the highest. If we count exactly 12 letters from E forward, we're going to get exactly to Q. If we want further verification, we can start looking at the different shapes and see that those distributions kind of match up at a lag of 12 um, in, in many different places. Of course, it's not going to be exact because they are two different uh, distributions after all. And now for the moment of truth. Let's compare the encrypted and decrypted documents side by side. As we can see, the decrypted document is totally meaningful. We can read the English words off of it, which gives us full confidence that the shift of 12 was indeed the correct shift to use. So those hostile planets are going to have to try a little bit harder in the future. Until next time.